If you want to be good at your finances, you should ask yourself certain questions from time to time. Where am I spending too much? Where can I save more? Is my investment plan aligned with my long-term goals? Just like you do a yearly health checkup, a check on your finances is something everyone should be doing. Just 30 minutes of your time in a year can save a lot of money in the future. And the thing is, you don't need a financial advisor to do this. And if you need some support, I'm here to help. So let's get started. Tracking down and documenting your income and expenses is the basic foundation of a financial review and I would highly recommend using an expense tracker. I personally track all my expenses in my note taking tool Notion using a template which you can download for free from the link in the description below. If you are someone who regularly do the tracking, then an annual review would be a piece of cake for you. But if not, then go through your credit card and bank statements and try to get an idea about your spending habits. It's very important to know where our money goes. And when we make most of our purchases with the credit card, it may feel like infinite money at the moment. So taking time to reflect on your spending will help you with your finances. Budgets are for those who want to achieve the financial goals. And if you already don't have one, then New Year is a perfect time to start. And for those who are smart enough to keep a budget, an annual fine tuning can really help. A good place to start is by comparing your budget to your expenses. Think about your goals for next year and see what expenses you have to cut down and what limits you have to increase. But whatever you do, keep it realistic. Just don't set a $10 budget limit on takeaways and then order once a week. When I did this annual review last year, I found out that I was paying for a newsletter subscription that I wasn't even using. For you, it could be another subscription or a membership fee. For example, if you have a Netflix subscription and weren't using much last year, then it would be a good idea to either cancel the subscription or move down to a lower tier. Another place where you can save some money is by terminating your internet and mobile contract and then call your company and negotiate for a lower rate. Four out of five times, you're going to get a better offer. A similar money trainer is our insurance policies. We probably have one to cover every situation. So it's important to reevaluate them and make sure that you're not paying more than what you're supposed to. Check your existing policies to see whether you can change your coverage options based on changes in your life situation. You can also shop around for new policies and save hundreds of dollars. Americans owe more than $850 billion on the credit cards. This is more than the GDP of 175 countries. And the strange thing is, according to a survey conducted, one in five Americans has no idea if they have a credit card debt. Credit card debts are the worst because of the high interest rates. So you have to keep them in check before you even think about investing your money on other options. So gather all the information you can get about your credit cards, the remaining balance, the due date, the interest rates, and then start paying them off. Here, you could use the Avalanche method of paying off debts. You start with the credit cards with the highest interest rates and then move towards the lower ones. 2022 was a rough year for the stock market. This is the biggest central bank tightening we have ever seen. Major average is all officially closing out the year with their worst losses since the financial crisis. There is a good chance that the sectors that did well in 2021 may not have had the similar performance this year. That's where rebalancing comes into picture. Rebalancing is simply adjusting the value of assets in your portfolio to the intended allocation. For example, at the beginning of the year, you may have gone with the 80-20 rule and invested 80% of your portfolio into stocks and 20% in bonds. And with time, the value of your assets may have shifted to 60% stocks and 40% bonds. A good rule to remember is that whenever your investment fluctuates by more than 10%, then it's time to do a rebalance. Our portfolio should always reflect investment goals that are appropriate to our current life stage. And when you make these tweaks to your portfolio, then remember to keep long-term growth in mind than short-term performance. And here is a useful tip. If you have any money losing positions or investments in your portfolio, then you can sell them off for a tax loss. And then you can write off those losses against taxes on any current or future gains. This tactic is known as tax loss harvesting. You are eligible for a free credit report from major credit bureaus every year. In Germany, where I currently live, this is done by an agency called Schufa. Credit scores are so important that they can affect everything from the loan amounts you can take, the interest you will have to pay, or even finding apartments for rent. Think of it as a scorecard for your ability to manage credit. The report show every inquiry and every outstanding debt. So checking your credit report is a good way to identify financial fraud early. Inflation is still high worldwide and a recession is looming. It's better to be prepared then be sorry if you got some value from this video then give it a like and think about subscribing to the channel until i see you with another video have a wonderful rest of the day and bye